Hi, right, this is boys and girls, young and old alike. It's time for an exciting sermon from Super Sermon Dave, man. Up in the air is a bird's playing note with Super Sermon Dave, man. Hey, everybody, got an exciting uh, topic for you today, something we all struggle with and try to figure out. And people say, don't judge me, you're judging me, and all this stuff. And, and the title of it is going to be entitled, in Understanding What Judging Someone Is. And what the Bible says about judging, and God's given me gave me a commentary, um, some commentary, His own words. Whenever I was up till I was up kind of late one night for a couple hours, He's given me some commentary. I believe it was a couple hours. He's given me some commentary what He says about what to explain what these scriptures mean about judging. I'm gonna read some scriptures to you about judging, and then I'm gonna give you the commentary that God gave to me. So hopefully this will help you. And this is another exciting sermon from Super Sermon Day, ma'am. And I hope, I pray this blesses you, and I pray that you will understand what truly judging is, and what judging by the fruits is, and all that. So let me go ahead and tell you the scriptures that I'll we'll be reading today is Matthew chapter 7, 1 through 5, and then 15 through 20, and then Luke 6, chapter 6, verse 37, John chapter 7, verse 24, Romans chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. James chapter 5 verse 9 and some scripture references are from John chapter 3, Matthew 5 chapter 5 verse 7 and 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7. I want to go ahead and read these to you. I'm going to read one scripture at a time or one chapter or some scriptures at a time and then read the commentary that God gave to me and I'm going to try to get this under 30 minutes and so hopefully this will help you and you'll understand what really judging is and what judging by the fruits is and all that. And I'm going to go ahead and read, go to Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 through 5. I'm going to go ahead and read that. Verse 1 says, Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what, with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in thine own eye? Verse 4, Or how wilt thou say to thy neighbor, or thy brother, Let me pull out the moat that is in thine, that out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Verse 5, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. So I'm going to go ahead and read the commentary that God gave me about that, because we can't help others unless we help ourselves first. And I'm going to tell you what, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 5, what God gave me, it said, God said, if a judgmental person will take the sin out of their own their life, their own life, with God's help, then they will be able to help others and show mercy with God's help. The judgmental person needs God's help first, getting victory over their own sin. Then they will the beam that is in their own eye. Then they can help the neighbor take the tiny speck out of their brother's um, brother's or sister's eye with God's help. So God gave me that, and I wanted just wanted to tell you that. And um, you can't help really help somebody until you take your own speck out or beam out of your own eye. You really can't help somebody, and um, can't be a hypocrite. You got you got to first help yourself before you can help others. But you shouldn't. I'm gonna go ahead and um, read the, what judging is. I looked up judging in in a, um, in the in, in my on my Google on my dictionary on my Google on my phone. It says judging is a form to form an opinion or an conclusion about and synonyms of that is to form an opinion come to the conclusion conclude decide determine and I wanted to tell you what a judge does in court um, a judge decides how a case is going to be ruled and sentenced in a court of law along with the help of a jury a prosecuting attorney defense attorney witnesses doctors etc with two, two witnesses a court is a um, a, a, a verdict or a verdict is settled uh, two witnesses that is uh, considered um, set in stone you know pretty much is considered a, a, a case you know um, but I just wanted to read that to you too and I'm gonna go ahead and read um, verses on um, chapter 7 of Matthew verses um, 15 through 20 and it says beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves you shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles even so every good tree bring forth good fruit but the corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit and neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit 
Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Now this is saying, not judging them by um, means of saying, of judge, a man's judgment, but this is by their fruits so you'll know if they're a Christian or not. And I want to go ahead and read what God gave me the commentary for that. It said, when someone becomes a Christian, there will be a change, a new birth called being born again, not going back into your mother's room again and coming back out, of the, out for birth, birth for the second time, as Nicodemus, the Sadducee in the Bible, was wandering. <laughs> but being born a new from above, as Jesus talks about, of the Spirit and of, of water. And John chapter 3, baptism doesn't save you though. There's a thief on the cross that wasn't baptized and he went to heaven. But it's good to say the old man is, is going away and the, putting the new man on in Christ. But it talks about that in John chapter 3, about um, being born from a new above and of the Spirit and of water. But uh, a new nature, if that person is, as, is acting worldly, sinful, like before they were saved, then they, you know, saved from hell, let Jesus and the hard Lord and Savior then they, would, they may be a new Christian or after knowing the truth of God's word, they are always sinning with no change in conduct or thought. People begin to wonder if they really are a Christian or do they care that they are doing wrong? You will know them by their fruits. If they love Jesus, then they don't want to live a life of sin for the devil, the devil of this world, sinful world system. Their life will in turn show good fruit their conscience is sharp and acute and fresh. They know right from wrong. If they love Jesus, then they want to obey him with God's help. So I wanted to tell you that's something that, you know, we all got to work on with God's help. And he, he, we can't do it on our strength. It's got to be God, but he can help us bear good fruit. But if someone's bearing bad fruit all the time, you kind of begin to wonder if they're really a Christian, if they really have the change or not, you know? I mean, are they really a Christian? I mean, you judge by the fruits, but you don't judge them and, man's judgment saying oh you're going to hell we're condemning you but you're thinking are you really a christian you know you're kind of wondering that but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and go to luke chapter six this is good too this god gave me this the other night so this is like if you want to talk to god about this you can but i am no means judging you or condemning or or passing sins or forming an opinion of you or anything like that i'm just trying to help you and show you what the bible says and what god told me the other night and I know it's from God because I'm not that smart. <laughs> I'm like a dodo bird. I'm not really that smart. No, I'm just kidding. I, I may be a little bit intelligent, but it's because I asked God for wisdom and He gave it to me and I believed. It says in James chapter, James chapter 1. Let's see, Luke chapter 6, verse 37 says, verse 37, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. So let me go to the commentary that God gave me on that. This is good too, because it's from God, not me. Let's see. Luke chapter 6, verse 37 talks about, and this is what God gave me. Judge not that God won't judge you. Don't condemn others, you won't be condemned. If someone doesn't show mercy to others, then God won't show mercy to them. He says he'll show mercy to the merciful. The Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. You know, you got to show mercy to those who, you know, that, that are instead of judging them and saying, oh, you're going to hell or all that, you know, and all that stuff, you know, and all that, you know, and, but, uh, yeah, it's just like, you know, um, I'm gonna look at that scripture again, Luke 6, 37, but you know, it's like, we're not supposed to judge by, like, saying someone's going to hell or passing sentence, you know, or condemning them or saying you're, you know, all this and that, but we're supposed to judge by the fruits and we're supposed to forgive too when someone does you wrong, but you wanna get that beam out of your own eye before you can take the tiny speck out of your brother's eye. But let me go now to, this is, let's see, John chapter 7. I did a study on this a while back, this sermon, and I thought this might help you understand what judging is by, by mere man's judgment or by the fruits of knowing if you're a Christian or not. And I'm not saying you're going to hell or you're, you know, all this stuff, or you're doing this and that. You know, you know, we all sin and come short of the glory of God. We all mess up, you know, but... We have to get it right, but if you're continually living in sin and you think to yourself, someone's doing it, you think, are they really a Christian, you know? But John chapter 7, verse 24 says, Judge not according to the parents, but judge righteous judgment. Now this right here is another form of judgment. And I want to show you what John chapter 7, verse 24 says, the, or the commentary that God gave me. And it says, None should judge someone by the way they look. They could be a Christian and they don't know it. 
person may not know that they're a Christian because the way they look, they may be dressed in raw, wild, or crazy crow clothes, or weird clothes, or look weird. And it says, be a Christian. Um, they could be a Christian, they don't know it. Just like the expression, you can't judge a book by its cover. God doesn't look at the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, they don't they don't know what's in their heart. So, you know, it's like, you know, you don't know what's in somebody's heart. And you don't know, you can't tell what they look like. They could be dressed in like rag clothes or like or black clothes or, or looking all weird and creepy or something. They could be a Christian, you know, they may just be their kind of way they dress. You just don't know. Or they could be wearing clothes that are dorky or nerdy or I don't know. It's just, you never know. You know, they could look really like the world, but they're really Christians, you know? Let me read Romans chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. This is pretty good stuff here. This is all good stuff because it's the Word of God. So I just really want to read this to you. Romans chapter 2. Let me get to it. So we are there. Romans chapter 2, verse 1 and 3 says, Therefore thou, in verse 1, Therefore thou art an unexcusable old man, Whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest do the same things. Verse 3, And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest him, that they that do such things, and do the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? If you're doing the same things they're doing, then are you any better than them? I think not. And I'm not saying you're doing it, whoever who's listening is, but people that are doing it, it's like, are they any better? They're not. But let me read the commentary to that on Romans chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. Why does someone judge someone and think or say, um, I can't remember in here, or here it is, say how bad they are and they're doing the way the very same things? That's hypocritical. They shouldn't look down on others, period. They should fix themselves first through Jesus Christ, and, and, and then they can then they can help others through Jesus Christ. They shouldn't look down on others. They shouldn't judge them because they may be doing the very same things. You know, you, you gotta help yourself first. You gotta, well, you gotta have ask God ask God's help first before you help somebody else. You should, and people shouldn't look down on each other because they're doing because someone's doing something because they could be doing the very same thing. I'm telling you, it's something else. You know, let me go ahead and read. Uh, go to James chapter five, verse nine, and so. I'm gonna try to get this under 30 minutes. Not that I want to, but that so that I can um, help you to not have to uh, just to get the point across and get this to you, and not have to. I don't know if you want to listen to a 30-minute sermon, but I, I, I get kind of long-winded. But I like to preach. I really do. And I love to tell you all about Jesus and um, how much He loves you and stuff. And I want to tell you that He does love you. And if you're struggling with sin, don't judge others. If you're doing that, don't judge others. Just don't judge each other because of things they're doing. Just, just if you, if you want to know they're Christian, not just see what by their fruits. Because people can say they're Christian, but they're not living the life. Then are they really a Christian? That's the thing you don't know. And you just really have to trust God to, to um, and pray for them. And hope, I, I'm trying to find James. I know where James. That. Let's see, Book of James. Let's see, where's that at? I'm gonna have to go through this. I know where James is at. Uh, <laughs> let me find it here. Okay, I know it's in here. I know where James is. At. I've been to James before. I've got a brother named James I love very much. And I know James, I knew it. Okay, James after Hebrews. Okay, James chapter five, verse nine. And um, I think you'll like this too. James chapter five. Verse 9 says, verse 9, Grudge not against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. But behold, the judge stands before the door. And when, the, when God says the judge stands before the door, you got to be very, very careful. But it says, John chapter 5, verse 9, the commentary that God gave me for all these verses. But for James chapter 5, verse 9, it says, A critical, judgmental person won't have any mercy, or rarely has mercy, for others, nor wants to help them. A critical person always disapproves and judges someone and looks down on them, even though they may or may not know that they are doing the very same things. They're grudging and slanderous and backbiters and wanting to destroy someone's character. They're scorners. They said the scene scorn from Psalms 1 says, chapter 1 says, not do not see with the scene, see the scorn, do not sit with scorners and stuff. So, um, 
But the judge Jesus is standing at the door. Judge them that do and to judge them that do such things. Not, we're not supposed. We're, you know, Jesus until and Jesus will show them mercy and forgiveness if they will repent look, of looking down on people and trying to destroy the other person's reputation, and will show them mercy if they will repent. Now, this is something that we all struggle with: is with judging and. We all struggle with it. We've all we've all judged somebody, and we're all guilty of it. And I have too. I'm guilty. I've repented. I'm trying to form an opinion, or thinking. I'm just looking at the fruits. You know, you don't. You know, a bad disease, corrupt tree can bear good fruit, and a good tree can bear bad fruit. But we all sin and fall short of glory. We all mess up sometimes. But that does not mean we're not a Christian. But um, you just know them by the fruits. If they if they don't have any fruit in life, you kind of wonder, are they really a Christian? I want to go to my conclusion of this sermon that God gave me. It says, don't look down on others. Don't judge them. You could be doing the very same things. Get it right. Don't be hypocritical. Ask God to forgive you if you are. These are just anyone in general. I'm not saying you are. You could be doing the very same things. Ask God to fix you, and then you can help them with God's help. Don't be critical, fault-finding, judgmental, and grudging, and backbiting. Don't judge someone by how they look. You never know how they are on the inside. You may not match they may not match their outward appearance if someone is a Christian they let then let them bear good fruit and not bad fruit let them obey God's word and act like Jesus and not like the devil in this world system let them live for Jesus or the devil pick choose to stay in mutual service says the Bible so let do not have one foot with God and one foot with the world one foot with the devil and one foot with God God doesn't work like that. Let the tree bear good fruit or bad fruit, not both. God's tree or the devil's. If you get tempted to judge, but but down, but but downgrade and grudge and backbite and and are critical and look, please look at yourself first and ask God to help you, and then ask God to help you help them. There's forgiveness. I want you to know that there's forgiveness for you. This was a sermon that um, a lot of people deal with, and I, I am, again, I entitled it um, Understanding What Judging Someone Is. So this is Understanding What Judging Someone Is. And if you've ever done this, or if you're struggling with things, or people are judging you, let me just go ahead and pray for you. And if you don't know Jesus, just repeat this after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me for judging others. I may have done the same thing. If I have done these things, forgive me. And if I haven't, thank you. I ask you to come to my heart, Lord, and save our repent of my sins. Uh, I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead three days later. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Behold, you stand at the door and knock, and I'll let you into fellowship with me. It says in Revelations. And I thank you for saving me. If you said that, you are saved. You are going to heaven. You are heaven bound. God will help you. He's not your helper now. He's not your enemy now. The devil is, but God's more powerful than that stupid devil, and you're going to make it. But just trust God today. He's going to help you. Let me pray for you. Down, Father God, I come in Jesus' name. Lord, if these people are judging at all, or if they've been judged, help them to know that they are, are, are godly, and that you look at them unreprovable, unblameable, and unblemished in your sight if they're Christians. You look at them as they're perfect to give them a clean slate. God, if they're judging or having struggle with that, help them not to judge that our parents or what, or bow by it, or judge, or grudge, or, or tell bearers, or ruin someone's reputation, or if their reputation's got run by others, please forgive those people that have done it, and please heal their hearts. These ones they got their hearts scorned and and, bad, and and their character running. I pray that you would help them and that the people would believe them, the other side, their story, not just the others. Lord, I pray that you would help them not to sin in this area and, if, and help others not to treat them like this. And if they do, let them walk in love because you said love your enemies. In Matthew 5, verse 44, you said, do good to those that hate you, bless those that curse you, and pray for those that spy please you and persecute you. And so that you be children of your Father, for He makes the sun rise on the good and evil, makes it rain on the just and on the unjust. And I just thank you for helping these people and healing their hearts and helping them to know that, that when someone looks different from them, they may be a Christian inside. And I've done that myself. I've judged people like it looks like Gothic or something or looks like what do they look like. And I've, I've judged them. I shouldn't have. And I've had to repent of wearing a Metallica shirt. I used to wear that stuff. 
I shouldn't have wore it, but I didn't really know. I was, I grew up Christian, but I didn't really know. But I pray that what people are wearing and what people are doing, well, they'll quit judging. If anybody's judging them or if they're judging, you'll help them, Lord, to judge by the fruits, only to know if they're Christian or not. But to really, truly ask you, God, to help the person to be a Christian and bear good fruit and pray for their enemies and pray for them. And I just thank you for helping them and giving them peace on the Sunday today. And I thank you. Happy Sunday to them and happy Sunday to you, God. And we just thank you, Father, for giving them peace and helping them in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want you to know that do not judge and you won't be judged either. You don't have to judge. You don't have to. All you can do is look at the fruit. You know, you can notice someone for a while. You can look at someone for a while. And if there's no fruit, if there's no change, they don't talk about Jesus or witness or they you see evil in their life. Now it's continually sinning. You begin to wonder if they're Christian. Now I don't want to go around judging someone saying they're going to hell or condemning them or saying you're not a Christian, you know. God knows their heart. They may be a baby Christian. They very well may be a baby Christian. They may not, they may be new at it, you know. They may sin for a while. We all sin and fall short of God, glory of God. The Bible says there's no none righteous, no, not one. We all fall short of the glory of God. There's none that, you know, God goes about to and fro and the, all the earth to, to bless those whose hearts are upright before Him. Keep your heart upright for him be spotless but we we're not perfect when we mess up we ask god to forgive us first john says if we confess our sins he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all righteousness he'll forgive you and cleanse you from all righteousness psalm 103 i believe says um that as far as the east from west so far as he removed our transgressions from us and he has not dealt with us after our sins nor reward us according to our iniquities so i want you to know when you mess up just ask god to forgive you and if that person is sinning and is supposed to be christian don't just automatically judge them saying oh they're going to hell or they may not be christian because we all sin and fall short of the glory of god there's none righteous no not one just like i said just like the bible says and so i just want you to know that be careful if you judge someone if you're doing the very same things be careful if you judge judge by fruits you know so if, if their fruit is just evil then you'll know well think are they really christian if their fruit is good you think well maybe they are christian but you got if they don't talk about jesus or don't want to hear about jesus from you then you kind of wonder if they're christian too and they may be very convicted in their life for not living right for God. I'm not sure, but I just want you to know that Jesus loves you, and I do too. And if you like anything, press subscribe, press the bell. I do sermons on Sundays if I can. I do jokes and stories. Um, I, I try to get a sermon in every Sunday if I can. You know, I um, try to, Lord willingly, with God's help. I haven't missed a Sunday for a little bit. I try to get the Word of God into you if you don't get to go to church, or even if you do. And I do jokes and sermons and stories and for kids and adults and it's all clean humor. I try to keep it clean because I'm a Christian. I love Jesus and I want to sin against God. And I got um, some kids on here that are um, that are subscribers and I care about very much. And I want them to know Jesus and Jesus loves you if you're watching. And Lord, and I just ask, I uh, just want you to know that uh, if you, I do, com I do impersonations of presidents, singers, entertainers, movie stars. <laughs> I even sang once. I've probably sound like a cow giving birth to a, um, uh, maybe a buzzer would be like a moo ha ha I'm just kidding. I'm kind of goofy though, but I put some funny stories on here. I'm goofy in a funny way, I hope. But I want you to know, Jesus loves you, and I do too, and I'm going to get out of here and let you watch this sermon, and let you get blessed. Remember, press subscribe, press the bell, get my sermons, get my jokes, my stories. I may, sing, may, I may sing again sometime. I've been talking about it. I don't know. i got to come up with some new songs first that I've, that I've listened to. So this is another exciting sermon from Super Sermon Dave, man. Up in there as the birds are playing. No, it's Super Sermon Dave, man. Up, up, and away. It's the birds playing. No, it's Super Sermon Dave, man. This is Super Sermon Dave. saying over and out. God bless you, Nighty Bye-bye.